Welcome to the December episode of the Carolina Flare Insider. I am your host, RV Hodge. I think we're going to have some fun today. Come along, let's check it out. We're here on Privateer and we are at the finished stages of this boat. The finished carpenters are putting in the last pieces of trim, the varnish work is getting wrapped up, and all of the things are coming close to an end. One of the few things that we don't know about or don't ever look at is what happens below the floor to make all of this work. So today, I'm gonna apply a little bit of Christmas magic and we're gonna go through the floor. Just like that, we're below the deck in the Project Caribbean. We're in what we call the egg crating department of the boat. This is down forward below all of the living spaces and everything that happens under here, most people never see, but there's a lot of technology that goes on and a lot of calculations, a lot of problems to solve. Where I'm standing right now will be the auxiliary fuel tank, but a lot of decisions have to be made in the design level before we get to this. For instance, everything that happens up here affects the trim of the boat. A fuel tank is never the same weight. When it's full, it's heavy. When it's empty, it's light. As we moved aft in this space, we get to dual water tanks. These water tanks, same story, they're never the same trim all the time. All of that adds weight. All of that has to be carried into the calculation very carefully before we ever get to the part where we start building them. So let's take a look at the waste tank and the plumbing that connects all these pieces together. So the waste tank represents all the same design paradigm that has to be calculated into the water tanks and the fuel tank. The waste tank, however, is, has to involve gravity flow plumbing. That kind of in, introduces an extra twist into the physics of it all. The design people carefully take all that into consideration as they're designing. And then we have the pumps to move everything around. We have to move fuel to the engines or to the back tanks. We have to move water to the showers and sinks and so forth. And obviously the waste tank has to have some kind of a way to be pumped out. Here we are on hull 66. And once again, we discover that this boat is really just a few weeks behind the Project Caribbean boat. If we look down forward here, we can see that the, the guys are glass tabbing the egg crating. And that glass tab work is really just consists of putting fiberglass reinforcements on all of the junctions to make the boat durable to withstand all the shocks and, and abuse it'll take through, through its lifetime. So we're taking a look at the progress on hull 67 here. You can see the bow thruster hole has been cut out. The tube is being prepared. The tunnels are in the boat. As you can see, the glass work is done. What we're looking at here is the chine spray rail construction and forward where the chine spray rail will never be picked up by a strap we make it out of a high density foam you can see the first part is put on it's been shaped and there'll be a second part that goes on this is a pattern piece it goes on and it kind of creates the basic shape that all gets fared together and will be glassed with several layers of fiberglass to toughen it up so the chine spray rail does a couple of things for us one it makes a delineation between essentially the bottom of the hull and the side of the hull. Its important tactical function is that it is our first line of defense for deflecting water away from the hull so that it doesn't end up on the people in the boat and back in the back. Further back on this structure, there will be a place where the straps from the travel lift will actually load up the chine spray rail and that gets made out of teak. Just toughens the whole equation up a little bit. It gets a few more layers of glass on that section as well. Everything's about durability when you're on the outside of the boat. As always, thank you for joining us for this episode of the Carolina Flare Insider. On behalf of myself and the Jarrett Bay staff, I would like to wish you and your family a Merry Christmas and a happy and prosperous new year. <laughs>